Welcome back, Flare community. You may have noticed something different about the intro. I hope you like it. Today, we are going to be comparing the smart contract heavyweight, Ethereum, with the new kid on the block, the Flare Network. Welcome to the main event. In the red corner, created by none other than Vitalik Buterin with a proven track record, reaching consensus via the proof-of-stake algorithm. With the first mover advantage, we have the most popular smart contract platform in the world. It's Ethereum. Over in the blue corner, we have the Challenger, pioneered by the legendary Hugo Filion, yet to make its debut, reaching consensus via the Federated Byzantine Agreement. Going on the stats, we have a faster, cheaper, more scalable opponent. It's Flare Network! I want to start by looking at the similarities between both Ethereum and the Flare Network. Two entities with a similar vision, but very different implementations. Both are decentralized systems which provide smart contract functionality. A smart contract is basically an agreement between two people in the form of computer code. Smart contracts run on the blockchain or network, which means they are stored on a public database and are immutable, meaning they cannot be changed. What makes a smart contract smart is the fact that transactions which happen within the contract are processed by the blockchain, which means they can be sent automatically without a third party. Another similarity is the fact that both Ethereum and the Flare Network both utilize the Ethereum Virtual Machine, or EVM for short. The Ethereum Virtual Machine is a blockchain-based software platform which allows developers to create decentralized applications, for example the applications which Flare Finance are building on top of the Flare network. One thing to note, just because the Flare network uses the Ethereum virtual machine, it does not mean that the Flare network relies on the Ethereum blockchain. There is no dependency. As mentioned, the EVM is just a piece of code which has been integrated with both Ethereum and the Flare network. I want to briefly mention wallets on both networks as they also have similarities. Many people ask about where their Flare assets will live. Well, they will be held in your Flare wallet. Ethereum wallets can contain the native token, Ethereum, in addition to tokens built on the Ethereum network, ERC20 tokens. This is the exact same principle for your Flare wallet, which will hold Spark and various Flare network tokens, and will be created when the Flare network launches. Now let's talk about some differences, starting with scalability and consensus. The goal of consensus is to write valid transactions to the ledger and is arguably the most important property of any decentralized system. The problem? Well, consensus protocols are a solution to the double spend problem, the challenge of preventing someone from successfully spending the same digital money twice. Ethereum 2.0 will use proof of stake as its consensus mechanism. This basically means transactions can be validated or mined depending on how much Ethereum a person owns. The more Ethereum a person holds, the more mining power that person will have, giving them more weight when deciding if a transaction is valid or not. As with proof of work, which Bitcoin uses, Proof-of-stake consensus is also susceptible to a 51% attack, meaning if you were to accumulate 51% or more Ethereum, you could create any transactions you wish. Now, this may seem like a threat, 
but it will be extremely hard to accumulate the majority of a popular, well-established asset such as Ethereum. I do, however, feel like it was important to highlight this fact. In contrast, nodes running on the Flare network use the Avalanche protocol with an adapted Federated Byzantine Agreement topology. What the hell does that mean? Well, if you're familiar with the XRP ledger, you should have a good idea. Let's imagine you have a node on the Flare network. You broadcast a transaction which is pushed to other nodes which you trust. After the majority of nodes you trust approve the transaction, the transaction will be pushed further for higher approval ratings by nodes outside of your trusted list. Once it reaches the supermajority of the higher approvals, the transaction is then written on the ledger. This method of validating transactions is what makes the Flare network fast, cheap, better for the environment, and also scalable. Speaking of scalability, let me explain how Ethereum's proof of stake consensus limits its ability to scale effectively. The security of the network is reliant upon the value of the Ethereum token. This is because, as we mentioned, if you accumulate 51% or more of the Ethereum, you effectively control the network. Let me hit you up with some hypotheticals. Let's say the Ethereum supply is 100 million, and to keep things simple, Ethereum is valued at $1. That gives Ethereum a market cap of $100 million. Let's imagine Tesla wanted to put their stocks onto the Ethereum network to be traded in a decentralized manner and hypothetically had a market cap of $100 billion. You may now begin to see the picture. It is probable you could accumulate more than 50% of the Ethereum for much less than the value of the assets stored on the network. This means a bad actor could accumulate Ethereum, control the network, then issue themselves every Tesla stock in existence for a tidy profit. Essentially, in a proof of stake network, the value of the assets held on the network should be less than the market cap of the network. Otherwise, the assets become at risk. I want to briefly touch on the price of transactions, which is correlated with the consensus algorithm. Currently, transactions on the Ethereum network are extortionate due to congestion of the proof of work system. Once Ethereum moves to proof of stake, the fees will certainly reduce. However, it will pale in comparison to the negligible fees of the Flare network. I would now like to compare use cases for each network's native token. Ethereum will be used to provide a stake in the network and verify transactions. Well, that was quick, as that will be Ethereum's only use case. Now, Let's move on to the Flare Network's native token, Spark, and the many use cases it has. As Spark is not required to secure the network, additional use cases are available as a result. I will be dedicating an in-depth video on all the use cases the Spark token has to offer in the near future, but for the purpose of this video, I will just briefly highlight them. Holders of Spark will benefit from the ability to vote in two different ways. One being a vote for data providers, which, well, provide data to the Flare Time Series Oracle. If you vote for a data provider, which gives price estimates close to the outputs of the Flare Time Series Oracle, you can receive Spark as a reward. More details on the Flare Time Series Oracle and how Spark can be used to generate a passive income can be found in the video linked above. 
With your spark comes another voting right, the ability to have your say on how the Flare network runs. This can be anything. New F assets, collateral ratios, spark inflation rates, and much more. The governance vote represents true decentralization. The Flare network will grow in the direction chosen by the active users. Remarkable. Let's talk about trustless issuance. You may have heard about wrapped Bitcoin. It represents a Bitcoin which has been minted on the Ethereum network with a one-to-one -one backing. This unlocks use cases for Bitcoin by giving it access to Ethereum smart contracts. That's great, but there is one problem, trust. When you create a wrapped Bitcoin, you rely on a third party to fulfill their obligations and issue you with the asset. One of the beautiful things about Fleur is the ability to trustlessly mint assets without a third party. Spark is required for collateral for minting assets and safety measures are built directly into the protocol to eliminate any risk. Check out my video on the creation and redemption process linked above for more details. This video was voted on by members of the Flare community channel. If you wish to have your say on future videos and simultaneously help support the channel, click the join button and discover some of the exclusive benefits you can receive. To summarize today's video, it seems like a knockout. Ethereum faces serious competition once the Flare network launches. With both networks utilizing the Ethereum virtual machine, developers are able to easily port over their smart contracts. Why would you not want to transfer your application to a faster, cheaper, more scalable solution? I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you are yet to do so, please feel free to like and subscribe for future videos surrounding the Flare network. Until next time, I'm out.